Technique number six in the Orange Belt Kempo Karate for Christ curriculum is striking serpent set. So we are back to our bear hug family again. And uh, we talked about an orange belt, the four ways to do it from the front, from the back, and then whether your arms are pinned or whether they are free makes up for the four ways to do the bear hug. In this case, they're attacking from the front here, and your arms are free. They're just coming around the waist, uh, establishing a bear hug hold. And uh, several of the principles that we learned in yellow belt, we continue to you know, uh, work with um, for, for orange belt as well. Ideas like you want to be able to get yourself heavy, make it difficult for them to lift you up, because that's what the goal of the bear hug is. Can they get you up off the ground here? So the arms are free, and they're going to try and lift you up from the front this time. So the first step I want to do in order to make myself heavy is I'm going to drop back with the right foot into a horse, almost a horse stance. You want to come that deep. So instead of just neutral bow, that may not be deep enough. They could still be able to lift you up. I'm going to get a little deeper than that. I'm going to drop all the way back to a horse stance, again, dropping my weight down. So um, with yellow belt, we move to the side. They have to lift you up this way. This time we're pulling them forward, right? And they'll have to, again, readjust their feet in order to come to a position where they can lift you up. So my step one is as soon as they've latched on is I'm going to drop back. My arms are free, remember, in this. But that's how I make myself heavy. Now, um, along with step one, making myself heavy, I'm going to have my counterattack right away. And uh, this is one of... Uh, one of what I would call the tricks of Kimpo, or tricks of, um, it's, Kimpo's not the only system that uses it, but uh, martial arts attack where we're going to hit two places at the same time. Um, and uh, this is one of my favorite ones. We're going to hit to the head in such a way that um, it's, it's almost like it resets or it reboots the brain. It's, it's actually a knockout strike. Um, now, it probably won't, like when you do it, knock them to the floor, they're completely out cold. That may happen. Uh, again, it's a stressful environment, and, and you might just boom, hit them hard enough that that's it. That's all you have to do. They're just knocked cold. We're not going to assume that's what will happen. And uh, usually, as I've done this in the process of teaching it to other people, um, I let them experience it once, and it's just like a stunning shot. Right? All of a sudden, boom, and they're seeing stars, and, and, and there's that, uh, it takes them a moment to kind of come to again. Uh, it won't necessarily knock them on the floor, but there's that boom, oh, what was that uh, kind of shock value idea, which can be enough that you can then make your escape uh, to get out, or you can um, apply a different hold. Again, this martial arts is about taking somebody who's small or dealing with a larger opponent. In this case, the larger opponent would have the advantage doing a bear hug, being able to lift you up off the ground. So how can somebody who's not as big and heavy be able to uh, defend himself? Well, we're going to use one of these sneaky tricks, so to speak. So as I step back and make myself heavy, what we're going to do is the right hand, palm strike, is going to come and it's going to hit above the eye, right? And as they're facing you, it's going to go above the left eyebrow here, boom, um, straight ahead. So that's going to make contact there. At the same time it does that, your, your left hand is going to ride up the back. And what we want to do is we want to make contact right at the, uh, the soft spot there, the bottom of the skull here. There's a soft spot right where the neck kind of connects. You want your big index knuckle to kind of fit into that hole. And as it does, at the same time, it smashes this whole line here. And there's uh, uh, all kinds of like brain signal neuron pathways that are coming up the spinal column there. And there's just a lot of good stuff all along this section here. And you're going to use the whole part of the top of your left hand at the same time. It's kind of smashing into that. What you can do to try and experience this is just kind of take your hand here and bump yourself underneath the ear here. Not to where you're hitting that soft spot, come right below it there, right below where it's hard, and just kind of bump your head, and it'll feel like everything's rattling. The whole cage is rattling, right? Well, if you've got that rattling sensation coming from the front and the back at the same time, it's like it reboots everything. It just shuts it down. Two concussive forces from the front and the back at the same time. But you need to hit the right spots. And we want it to come kind of diagonal through their head 
that way, so we're hitting the, uh, it'd be the left eyebrow here, boom, as you're facing right above the left eyebrow, and coming up right behind, essentially, and in, in underneath the uh, right side ear there, and all the way to the middle of the head. You want to hit this whole section right here with the top of your hand so that that index knuckle goes into the soft spot. All at once, boom, right? And not just a attack, but a stick it. Hit hard, boom, and stick it that way. Uh, when you're practicing this on a partner or um, if you got, oh, let me show you this trick and go show some friend, man, don't, don't do it real hard. It, it only takes a light little bump for them to kind of get the, whoa, what was that experience? And that's enough because what we're trying to do is buy time in this case. We've got this bigger guy trying to lift you up off the ground. Boom, that hits like, whoa, what just happened, right? Their gain has just been shut down for a second. And if you hit hard enough, it might be shut down in the sense of their legs buckle and they hit the ground. That's even better. That's great if you knock them out with that first move. But all we can guarantee is it will, it will cause a delay in, in their plan. They'll have to kind of, uh, while the head reboots, kind of, uh, they're going to have to get their balance back. They're going to have to, whoa, where am I and what's going on? So we step back here. We're hitting above the eye, behind the head together. Same time. Now from here... I want my arm to slip over the top of his right arm, and I'm grabbing his chin with my left hand, again, kind of using that crane hand to hook the chin, and I'm going to drop my elbow onto his back, which automatically lifts the chin up. We want to cause this, like, uh, arching reaction here, because you're pinning their back with your elbow as it goes down while their chin's coming up, stretching their throat in such a way that they're forced to look straight up at the ceiling that way. We call this the chin lift. Move. And it's introduced here. We're going to see it again uh, later in this in this same level, this chin lift idea. So again, step one, we're coming back, boom, immediately hitting to the head, front and back at the same time. Left hand's reaching over, grabbing to the chin, dropping my elbow down, lifting that chin back. Now, so chin's lifted up, the throat's extended. Now we see where the name striking serpent's head comes into play. And we're going to use a different weapon this time. You want to take your fist here. And just bring the, uh, the fingers forward. If you were making a, a full fist, you would go fingers in first, close it all the way, and then the thumb wraps on top. We're going to do a half fist. You're just going to close the fingers down so that the knuckles, the line of the knuckles of the fingers are still extended. And then I'm going to tuck my thumb here on the inside to give that some backup mass there so that I can actually punch with the line of the knuckles this way. Now, this is a, uh, as a tool, as a punching fist here, it's, uh, it's good for soft tissue targets. It's not real good for skeletal targets. Um, what's naturally going to happen is um, as you hit something, that is going gonna, is gonna to be forced to kind of collapse into a full fist the harder you hit. But it's good in this case because, again, um, we want to keep in mind the sanctity of life of the person that is attacking us and we're not trying to use deadly force against someone who, you know, is trying to, you know, put you in a bear hug, lift you off the ground. Uh, you could be in a dangerous situation where they're trying to put you in a car, that sort of thing. Uh, but if it was deadly force, because this is going to be a shot, that right half is to the throat, right to the bottom there. And what it'll do is it'll take the throat and just kind of gag it closed. But the throat's a fairly spongy tissue. It'll pop back, back open, uh, or it should pop back open. If this were to be a deadly technique, we'd use more like a sword hand, boom, or a full fist, kind of punching into the throat. That would do a lot more damage, maybe permanent damage. But this half fist, what it's going to do is when it hits, if it holds its position, it can only hit so hard. And it can hit hard enough that it'll cause that gag reaction uh, in the throat, but it won't necessarily cause like a complete tear of the, uh, the windpipe. And that's your target right there with the half fist. So, the way it looks when you're looking down at your, your half fist is it looks like the kind of the diamond head of a snake. So striking serpent's head is that head of the snake striking there right at the end. We're using this half fist. Uh, other systems call this the leopard's paw, too. Um, the, the ones that have some Chinese influence in some of the Kempo systems here. Um, but we're going to refer to it as uh, the serpent's head in this case when we're striking there to the throat. And you'll see this uh, also in the forums kind of um, we'll use this idea at the end of uh, short form two. We'll see this half fist again. So, 
Striking Serpent's Head again, we've got you in a bear hug, we step back, we're hitting the front, hitting the back at the same time, wrapping over their arm, pulling the chin down, and this has the lever on their back that way, otherwise you're just kind of pushing them back. You want a lever on their back that really arches them and they can't get away from you. And while they're nice and close, half fist strike to the throat. When you're practicing in the air, do the half fist right level with your, your own wrist as you do that chin lift idea. And uh, that will be about where it'll be when you're actually doing it on somebody too. So that's striking serpent's head. Practice that. And that is uh, technique number six for uh, Kempo Karate for Christ.